was fun, and I trust that today will be good. Um, I had the privilege of being at the mainland center yesterday. I would love to ask if you, I'm sure you might not mind, to listen to that or watch. Um, I would have loved to try to relay foundation, but watch that. Today will come at another angle, all right? But at the end of the day, we'll meet, and then it will be a blessing to us, amen. You know, because this privilege is huge. Um, gaining momentum is, is that platform, you know, like you know, where God helps you to start your year and start it right. And it's, it's just great, you know, um, to, to do what we do and for you to just listen and to be blessed. So that will do a bit of a mindset adjustment, all right? A bit, a bit of a mindset adjustment. And it's my desire, all right, in faith with your pastors, that the Holy Spirit would accomplish much more than we could ever imagine. Thank you, Jesus. Just say with me in the name of Jesus. I believe that I receive revelation, illumination, and understanding right now. Amen. Praise God. Just taking off from some things PM said. It's amazing, and it's sometimes sad and rather unfortunate that the believer enters a new year with a high level of uncertainty. It's actually an error. As a child of God, there should not be uncertainties. Please understand this. In areas where we seem to have them, but religiously we've programmed ourselves for, for those things. And it, it's not wrong. It, it's, it's funny. The way we behave when it's becoming December 31st, and in case I, you know, Step on your toe. We'll pray healing for it. We'll be fine, right? <laughs> but watch this. Why should I get to December 31st and be praying, God, may I see the new year? There's something wrong with it. Please understand. Why do I enter January 1st? I'm like, oh, God, thank you. I made it. You? Do you know who you are? It's uncertainty that does not belong to the church. Let me flow. Now, Matthew 22 from verse 1. We'll, we'll just read quickly. Thank you, Father. Matthew 22 from verse 1. It says, and Jesus answered and spoke again to them the parable, right? And said, let's go. The kingdom of heaven is as unto a certain king. Certain what? King. King. Which made a marriage for his son. Let's go on. He sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden. Bidden means to be invited, all right, to the wedding, that they should come. Let's go. Again, he sent forth all the servants, saying, tell them that I've been invited. Maybe New King James. So I'm not converting bidden <laughs> to invited, all right? New King James is fine. Thank you. Again, he sent, the, you know, sent out all the servants saying, tell those who are what? Invited. See, I have what? Prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are about to be ready. What did you see? Things will be ready when they get here. What did you see? All things already come to the wedding. We're going to read this verse again. Let's see that verse one more time, please. Verse 4. Again, he sent out all the servants saying, tell those who are invited. See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cow or cattle are killed. All things already come to the wedding. Let's keep going now. <laughs> And they made light of it and went their ways. You know, one to his farm, another to his business. And the rest seized, you know, his servants, treated them spitefully, killed them. 
But when the king heard about it, he was furious and he sent out his armies, destroyed the murderers, burnt up their cities. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is what? Ready, but those that were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways and as many as you find, what should you do to them? As many as you find, what should you do to them? So we'll stop at verse 10. Let's see 10. So those servants went out, verse 10 please. So the servants went out to the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled. And then we entered another song wasn't dressed properly. But, but that's not the point for tonight. I'm staying on, there was an invitation. But the invitation came after the preparation. There's a divine order. There is no invitation before preparation. Our land, you get it. There is no invitation before preparation. It's always preparation, then invitation. In Genesis chapter number 1. The Bible says from verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form of void, darkness upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of water, God said. And he began to say, began to create, create, you know the story. God put everything in place before he put man. He didn't put man first and figured out how the man will survive. He didn't put man first and then started thinking what the man will walk on, sleep on, lie on, eat or chew or anything. Everything the man needed for his survival was available before the man showed up. No uncertainty. No uncertainty. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Oh, thank you, Father. Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breath into his nostrils, the bread of life, and man became a... All right, next verse. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. So God planted a garden, then he put the man in a garden. Watch this. God planted a garden, put man in the garden. God planted man. So that means the man shows up inside a garden that was planted. Adam's assignment was only to manage the garden. He didn't plant the garden. Once again, location shows up before the man shows up. Anybody seeing this thing? When you entered 2024, God had finished 2024 before you entered it. And it's not about 2024. God had finished your life before you started it. The church of Jesus has to deal with uncertainties. We have to stop walking in uncertainties. The way God did it for Adam, God did it also for us in Christ Jesus. Where should we start from? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You know it, but we'll see it. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, all right? Therefore, if any man beware, he is what? All things are what? How many things are new? You have to think about it. How many things are new? How many things are new? He didn't just say the person is new. He said, what is new? Meaning the moment you got saved, everything changed about you. Don't forget, there is no invitation before the preparation it's preparation, then invitation. In the story where the man said, go invite people for the feast. We use it for evangelism. Go and tell them all things are ready. Then you get born again and you come and there's no feast. I don't know if you got me. The story is come, there's a feast. Then we get born again and there's nothing. We suffer sometimes more than before we got saved. Something is off. Now, if you're calling Allow me to use that word, like Apostle Paul. Jesus said, I will show him the many things he will suffer for my name's sake. That's, that's different. If by assignment, by location, there are things we're going to go through, that's fine. There are systems and processes, I understand that. At the end of the day, <laughs> it's still that. Before your calling, before you showed up, before you were invited, there was a preparation. God doesn't do party and then rice is coming after we are about to go home. No, you guys don't like that kind of party. Or they bring rice, they forgot meat. Right, the truck fell somewhere on the... You don't like that. 
You want everything ready. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. As his divine power has given unto us how many things? All things that pertain to what? Life and godliness. So his divine power did what? Gave us how many things? All right, let me go to one you're familiar with. John chapter 14, verse 1. Or more familiar with, let me say. John 14, verse 1. Are you there? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Next verse. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. What's the next line? Was this before you got born again or after you got born again? That means before you got born again, there was preparation. So preparation before invitation. I go to prepare a place for you. Next verse. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and receive you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. Is this getting clear? I'm just trying to lay a foundation. Say preparation. Invitation. Preparation invitation when I'm invited all right say say when I'm invited it means everything was ready if it wasn't ready I wouldn't have been invited another more familiar verse first Peter chapter 2 verse 9 first Peter 2 9 but why did I say 2.9? No, I'm coming back to 2.9 later. First Corinthians 2.9. <laughs> we'll come back here before we're done. First Corinthians 2.9. Thank you. But as it is written, I has not seen here, neither has it entered the thing that God is about to prepare for you. Listen, catch this, I pray. Please catch it. Because I could stand here and start saying, God is going to prepare something for you and almost half of us will be shouting amen. That's why it's easy to sway a lot of us into different kinds of prayer meetings. And we'll raise all sorts of prayer points and you will pray it. And you're not screening, scanning, checking, cross-checking, you pray. Why? You need to check the book. Understand what is written. Is God about to prepare? What did he say? When did he prepare it? That means the day you got born again, you just showed up into a prepared way. Oh, someone has to get this thing. Let me ask you this. Or let me just say. Everything you and I would ever release our faith for is already on a path. Everything. So when we start praying and harassing God, oh God, can you not see? God, can you not see what I'm going through? Why are you not doing it for me? Why are you not making it happen in my life? Everything you need is somewhere. I've seen that in the Word. I've seen that in my life. I've realized that there are certain things that you're spending time praying about that if only you just take one step the Holy Ghost tells you to take, things just line up like a domino effect. So 2024, let's tweak the mindset. Before invitation, there's preparation. So the life I'm living now is only to discover what has already been prepared. Please understand that. That's the life I'm living. That's the life you're living. That's what we're called to do. To enjoy what has been prepared. The king said to them in Matthew 22 that we saw earlier, Tell the people, come, all things are ready. DCC, everything is ready. All we need to do is find it, walk in it, receive it. Everything is ready. Let's see that verse again. All right, first, first Corinthians. I was about to say Peter again. Tonight. As it is written, I has not seen, nor hear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has what? But hold on, he said, eyes have not seen, ears have not 
heard, it hasn't entered the heart of man, but it has been prepared. So because I'm not seeing it, doesn't mean it hasn't been prepared. So what affects us is majority of our prayer points are experience-based, circumstance-based, problem-based, but usually not word-based. So because I don't see it, I say I don't have it. No, but Bible said, eyes have not seen it, but it has been prepared. So the issue is not God prepare. The issue is not God do. It's I need to see. I need to see, I need to hear, I need to conceive it because it's prepared. Beyond your wildest imagination, it has been prepared. You haven't seen it, doesn't mean it's not real. Doesn't mean it's not ready. Doesn't mean it's not available. Do you understand this, please? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. We're just going around Bible verses to show one point, one point, one point. But if you get that one point, it affects your prayer life. Ephesians 2 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? Which he might prepare, is about to prepare, is going to prepare. What, what did he say? We're just traveling through scriptures to prove one point. And we can keep going, but I'm going to stop on this one. To show you. Everything is ready. Like, like it is ready. Ah. Everything is ready. And the more you see, the more you realize, why, why have I been praying the way I've been praying? You know the way we know how to pray sometimes? Roll on the floor. We're trying to harass God, right? As some people share testimonies, all kinds of testimony. How I had to wake up 3 a.m. Oh, I prayed that fire prayer. And God knew, ah, my child is serious now. Like, seriously? So your child wants you to pay school fees and your child has to wake up 3 a.m. in the morning? You say, what are you doing, Junior? I'm sweeping, so you know I'm serious. So that I can pay school fees. It would be an irresponsible parent that would tell that kind of child, well done. If you heard me well. It would be an irresponsible parent. Ah, son, what are you doing? I need to scrub your car very well. Why now? Ah, you're not going to school on Monday so that you pay. Like, seriously? Did you beg your parents to give birth to you? Did you force them to give birth to you? Now, hold on. I know some parents could act like that. I'm not talking about those people. All right, so in case you came from that kind of home, just delete. I'm not talking about that. All right, those are anomalies and just leave it. And we can understand and explain everybody's condition. All right, so let's leave that. But watch this. Did you force your parents to give birth to you? If your child has to coerce you to handle your responsibility, you are irresponsible. Are you getting this? Before the invitation... There was a preparation. I'm spending time on this point. Someone needs it tonight. Before preparation, I mean invitation, he prepared it. He set it. He made it ready. Oh God, when am I going to get married? They told me it was 2022. We missed it. It was 2023. Ephesians 2.10 Amplified Version. Say all things are ready. All things are ready. Can you read this one with me? Let's go. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art created where? In Christ. Reborn is laying foundation. Don't worry. Let's continue. But that foundation is important. But let's go. I'm not staying there. Spiritually what? Transformed, renewed, ready to be used for? This is where we're going. Let's go now. Which God prepared 
for us beforehand. Continue. Taking part which he saw that we would live in the which he and made ready. Tell someone all things are ready. Say, say it's ready. No, no, say, say it's ready. Say, say it's ready. Say 2024 was ready before I entered it. Say it again. 2024 was ready before I stepped into it. Say my life, my glorious destiny was made ready, prearranged, preordained before I showed up. My job is to find it, walk in it, enjoy it. Are we together here? Let's read it again. Just read the whole thing. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works. Pause. Take a deep breath. Can we continue? Which God... No, no, no. You know what? You know what? Forget about everybody else. Which God prepared... Listen, it's not a selfish thing to do that from time to time. In fact, you need to do that more. If you don't catch it, you can't give it. All right? In Acts chapter 3, Peter said that that beautiful gate, such as I have. And he was standing with John. He didn't say such as we have. He wasn't selfish. All right? Sometimes, even when you fly in the plane, they say that when oxygen is off and max drops, sort yourself. It's not selfishness. It's because while you're trying to help the other person without helping yourself, you could also lose consciousness. All right? So we find many times you don't understand it yet. So you need to get it. Are you ready now? Which God prepared for me beforehand, taking part which he said, so that I should walk in them, living the good life, Hold on, hold on. What kind of life? What kind of life? What kind of life? What kind of life? Okay, let, let's find living the good life again. Are you ready? Let's go. Living the good life, which he and say all things are ready. Say, say all things are ready. Say all things are ready. I'm living the good life. I'm living the good life. I'm living the good life. I'm living the good life that God prearranged and made ready. For who? L look around, look around. For who? For who? For who? Because sometimes you say for us, something mm -mm. for me. When you understand it, you can share it. For me, it's not selfish. You're personalizing the revelation. It's meditation. Are you getting this now? Say, for me. So if God had done all of this, and all he did was to get something ready for you and I, there's a divine pattern. In Genesis 1, everything was ready before Adam showed up. Now for the new creation, everything is ready before you show up. Everything is always ready. But we said earlier, so let's go back there. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. As it is written, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the thing that God has prepared for them who love him. Verse 10. But God has what now? Revealed them to who? By who? For the Spirit searches what? All things, even the... You know, there's something we we'll love to say here. Follow who no road. When it comes to the divine plan for your life, one person knows the road. That's the Holy Spirit. And from what I saw from the recap PM touched that yesterday, there are good parts, but there's the best part for your life. Are you understanding this now? So you follow the person that knows the road. Everybody will give you good advices. They'll give you good counsel. Tell you what is good. Do this, do that, do that. One person knows the master plan. Follow that one person. Please understand that. Sometimes, even if you feel, oh, I need to relocate, he knows where you need to go. He knows where you should not go. 
You don't go to where everybody is going to because they said everybody is going there. If only you hear the sad stories of the people that you think traveled and are doing well. Social media doesn't give a good account. All right? You have to understand it. Follow the person that knows the road. It's that simple. Now, Psalm 23, verse 1. Psalm 23 from verse 1. The Lord is what? I shall not. All right. A shepherd has what? Sheep. Who leads who? Which one are you? Who is shepherd? Follow who? No, hold on. Verse 2, let's go. He makes me where? Who makes you lie down? Where? Meaning he knows where your green pasture is. It might look green, but he knows it's not your own. The one he prepared, he knows it. Are you understanding that? It might be a good idea, but he knows it's not for you. It might be what everybody else is doing, but he knows that's not what you are to do. He will make you lie down in green pastures. He will lead you beside what? First relationship, it didn't work. Second one, it didn't work. Third one, it didn't work. He's not leading you inside trouble water. That's not him. All right, he leads you where? Still water. Still water. Does that mean there might not be conflict or challenges? There will be. It's part of the package. But the water he gives you is still water. All right, that means you can be drinking still water where enemies surrounding you. But the water he gives, still water. Do you understand that now from this place? Let's go on. He restores my soul. So even when I make a wrong move, so even if you've had bad business, bad relationship, bad everything, he will reset you. He restores your soul. Then he will lead you in parts of what now? For whose sake? You know the way some of you pray? God, you need to... He has a reputation to protect. When you know that, you relax. That you are God's own specimen. God is dangling you in his showroom. And God doesn't like poor, poor specimen. Are you getting this tonight? We'll get there soon. Next verse. Yea, do I walk where? What will I do? Something I noticed here, and I want you to see. The Lord is my, I shall not. He made me in green pasture. Who made me lie down green pasture? He leads me beside the, he restores my, he leads me in parts of, for his. What, what happened here? You have seen it already. So even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, but even then, he doesn't leave me. He will never forsake me. He's always with me. Hold on now. Does that mean you continue at your own risk? Yeah, because many Christians assume that. And then they get into trouble. You have to follow the shepherd. So he said, he will. And watch this. Do I walk through the shadow of death? <laughs> I'll fear no evil because you are what now? Then what happened next? Your rod and your... Meaning I followed your instruction again. Because staff is to guide you. So I followed. I didn't continue going. We keep getting into trouble because we keep going. I'm trying to finish laying my foundation. <laughs> Are you enjoying this foundation? Yeah. Foundation makes the rest easy to just run through. Right? So that's what we're doing. Let's lay it. All right? Next verse. What did he do? Where? Are you sure? What did he do? And then, after that, watch this. When you start from verse 1, and I don't mean saying it religiously, when you make verse 1 your lifestyle, the last three verses will happen in your life. 
All because he followed the shepherd. He got eventually to what was prepared for him. Even in front of enemies, he had abundance. He enjoyed a fresh anointing because he continued following his shepherd. And then he enjoyed consistently the operations of goodness and mercy. Because you have to start from verse 1. So as much as things have been prepared, somebody knows the road. Commitment 2024. Follow that person that knows the road. Somebody offends you, he says, forgive. Leave it alone. It is not worth it. Alright, sometimes we stupidly lose direction to park car to fight somebody. Do you understand? I'm saying that figuratively now. You park the car of your destiny to come down from car. To start fighting someone that is not going your way. In the story of your destiny, that person does not matter to you in another 10 years. But you didn't see it now. So you wasted your three years to fight. And you missed a direction. But thank God, even if you walk through valley of shadow of death, you will reach. Do you understand this? So follow the person. Somebody needs this direction. I mean, I've told myself, okay, we'll do part two. I'll lay foundation from yesterday. I've been praying about different things, but someone needs something here tonight. Don't waste your today because of somebody. They took your boyfriend. Huh? Assist them in going quickly. Please understand that. I'm not trying to sound funny. We waste too much time, too much spiritual resources on things that are flimsy and are not in our path, but we just didn't notice. If only you know how precious the agenda of God for your life is. You will smile even when it looks like defeat because you know everything is going to work out right. So because he followed the shepherd, there was a table set before him even where there were enemies. He enjoyed a consistent fresh anointing and then goodness and mercy followed him. A few things, now I'm entering where we're going. That keeps affecting the church to enter the fullness of what God has prepared for them. Number one is low self-esteem. The church of Jesus is yet to come into a realization of who we are. And a full revelation of it. Say low self-esteem. The way we pray, the way we worship, the way we talk, the way we act, the way we do things. Is reading with a lot of low self-esteem. Are you listening now? So you must rise up and say, no, I'm understanding now who I am. Number one, the verse there said, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. But sometimes the way we respond when it comes to mercy, we seem like we're not sure if God will ever have mercy on me. First Peter 2, 9, now we're ready for it. Let's read, want to go? Your chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people, special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of, into what? Where did he call you out of? Into what? I'm not staying there, I just want to say it again. Verse 10. Are you ready? Once <laughs> you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. I'm going to spend a bit of time here for some reason. Say, I have obtained mercy. I, I, I hinted it a bit last night. We pray for mercy as if we are blind Bartimaeus. And it's not our fault. The ministry gifts make us do that. Cry and shout, oh Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You if he didn't have mercy on you, you couldn't be born again. You say, but the Bible says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I have your time a little bit. Let's quickly read. Romans chapter 9 from verse 14. We're going to move quick on it. 
What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. Let's go. For he says to Moses, I will do what now? Have mercy on whom I will. Have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will. That shows that it is in God's hand. Let's go on. So then it is not of him that, nor of him that runs, but of him that what? Again, it is in God's hand. And that's a good place for it to be. Let's go on. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I raised you, that I may show my power and that my name may be declared on earth. If you don't understand Genesis 15, you won't understand this verse. I won't explain it, but let me quickly say, in Genesis 15, God already told Abraham that your children will be slaves somewhere for so many years, and I will bring them out with a mighty hand. I will deal with that nation. Simple. Pharaoh was not born. Moses was not born when that thing had been declared that it will happen. You have to understand that to understand this. Let's continue. Therefore, he has mercy on whom he will have mercy and he will harden whoever he wants to harden. You have to understand context. So slow down now. Let's read. You will say to me then, why does he find fault? Who resisted him? But indeed, oh man, who are you to reply against God? These are quotations. You have to follow them, but I'm not staying there. I'm going to my point. Will the thing form, say to the one that formed it, why have you made me like this? I like it. It's in God's hand. It should stay there. Does not the potter have power over the clay? He does. From the same lump, he makes one vessel of honor, another vessel of honor. It's okay. What if God, wanting to show his wrath, to make his power known, endured with much long suffering vessels of wrath for destruction? So some people might be called vessels of wrath. Go on. And that he may make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of who? Which he had. First two words of the next verse. Hold on. Who are you? And you are what? Vessel of mercy. So even if you say, some people are made for vessel of wrath. I, I found myself. I'm a vessel of mercy. You'd appreciate this better. NLT. Verse 23. 23. 23, NLT, we read 23, 24, NLT. Thank you. He does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those to whom he shows mercy who were prepared in advance for glory. And we are among those. Ah, 2024, only God can show mercy. I know who he's showing mercy to. Oh, 24. We don't know who God will show mercy. We know some. Because they are vessels of mercy. You were created for mercy. Wired for mercy. The mercy was ready before you showed up. Are you getting this now? So you go back to that first Peter 2.10. You have not obtained mercy. Now you have obtained it. How many of you know you are seated together with Jesus in heavenly places? So let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. Ephesians 2, 4. F but God, who is rich in? Because of the love with which he... So do you know for God so loved the world? So that love cannot work if there was no mercy. That mercy cannot work if there was no love. So anywhere you see love, think of mercy. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of the love with which he loved us, even when we're dead in trespasses, I've entered the next verse now, all right, made us alive together with Christ by grace, are you saved? Next verse now. And raised us up together, made us sit. Pastor, I think people might see you better. Please stand up. Please sit down. Please stand up, sir. Please sit down. Small exercise. Stand up once again. Sit down. I asked him to stand. And then I asked him to sit. P please, sir, can you come with the chair? Hope you don't mind. Thank you. Please come with the chair. So that we see better. Please stand. Please sit. Please stand. Please sit. Please stand. Please sit. 
Please stand now. So I'm asking him to stand and sit. God did not ask us to sit. He didn't ask you. He didn't ask you. He didn't ask you. He didn't ask you. By virtue of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you were seated. All your dealings as a Christian, they are from this position. Your prayer is from this position. Your worship is from this position. Your authority over the devil is from this position. But in the church, we say, can we thank God for our family? Father, we thank you for my father, my mother, my sister, my brother, everybody. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You know the way we used to do all those um, television um, Christmas greetings? I want to thank God for my mommy and my daddy and my brother and my sister. You know, that, that's how we do this thing, right? Then they now say, can we start binding the devil now? You know what we do? Hey, shabalo, balo. That's the time to even sit. How did you get to this chair? Mercy. Because verse 4 says, for God so rich in mercy. Because of the great love with which he loved you. Even when you were dead in trespasses and sins, made your life with Christ by grace are you saved. And then he raised you up together with him and made you sit. And you're not just sitting. There's a footstool in front of you. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make the enemy your footstool. So your job is to enjoy footstool while you're still here. But footstool is what is getting us to be praying in the body of Christ. Footstool is making you wake up 3 a.m. in the middle of the night. You know, all those kinds of gymnastically prayer. Relax. The devil was defeated before you showed up. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing, 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 nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Nothing. You pray over food because you're afraid. Not because you're giving thanks for the food. You pray over journey because you're afraid. Not because you're thanking God for a journey. You pray to go for interview. You fast to go for interview. You fast to do everything. Are you not seated? Are you not seated? Maybe you are seated inside your house somewhere around here. But that's not what the Bible said. He made you sit together with him in heavenly places. Do you know where you're seated? You're seated where Jesus is sitting. At his right hand. In a place of power. In a place of dominion. This was prepared before you were invited. Mercy was in your package. Everything you need is here. In this place, there's no defeat. In this place, there's no failure. In this place, there's no barrenness. In this place, there's no accident. In this place, 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 you're seated. So it's like, oh God, I don't even know if I'll have mercy this year. You, you, I'm a child of mercy. I'm a product of mercy. And I understand revelation of covenant, at least to some extent. But we need to be careful. You say, I know the covenant I have with God. No. Listen, there's no covenant anybody has with God that is superior to the one Jesus has with God. We are all products of that one. What we call covenant with God, actually revelations we have of what has already been done in Christ. So maybe you now understand longevity. Say I have a covenant of longevity. It is in Christ. The same way you have it, everybody has access to it. But because you got it, it's now I have a covenant of protection. Anywhere I go, nothing will happen. Everybody has it. Is that someone caught it and he personalized his own. And then you are busy hailing the person. I can never die. I can, you say, ah, that person can never die. The same thing was written concerning you. You 
You say, I've never been sick. That person doesn't fall sick. The same thing was written about you. It's just low self-esteem. Low self-esteem in the church. Hailing people's revelations, that is the same thing available for all of us. Low self-esteem. If PM tells you now I'm going to have a great year, ah, PM will have a great year. Why? You go. You don't. You are not sure about yourself. Uncertainty. But you have faith in other people. No faith in yourself. You have faith in God's goodness over them, but not about your own self. Deal with it tonight. He made you sit. He loves you. Thank God for the opportunity we have today to preach the word to you. But there was a time we were like you sitting in the crowd and in some other conferences we were still like you sitting in the crowd. We're not better than you. We're joint heads together. We're brothers and sisters. You say, I, I cannot call you brother. You are my man of God. If I can call Jesus brother. And Jesus is not having pressure. Heart attack. High BP. That I called him brother. If our Bible says he is not ashamed to call me his brother. We are brothers. The same way husband and wife, you are equal in Christ. There is structure in the home. The same way there is structure in the church. But in Christ we are still equal. If I do not use my faith and use your faith, you will get the blessing I want. Are you understanding this thing tonight? This thing is available. So 2024, let it take you to the word. Find out who you are. Find out you're seated. You're blessed. Don't say the special prayer, 7 a.m. for blessing. You're running there. What are you looking for? Something you have or the one you don't have? What are you looking for? Oh, but I don't have a child yet. Relax. Have you tried sitting down for a while? Have you tried sitting down for a while? Everything you're looking for from that sitting position is available. Everything from here. Because from here you see better. You see well. You see clearly. From down there you don't see well at all. Your view is obstructed. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Colossians 3 verse 1. Watch this now. If then you were what? Raised with Christ, seek the things that are where? Above, where Christ is sitting, because that's where you are. Seek the things there. Next verse, please. Set your mind where? Not the one here. Not foil price. No money or no money. Where should you put your mind? You say, should I think of heaven? No, think of the realities of heaven. All the things heaven has made available. That's what I say you should think about. You know what? NLT, please, from verse 1. NLT from verse 1. Are you ready for this? Since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on what? Jesus said, thy will be done on as it is done where? Did they fall sick for heaven? So the will of heaven is what should happen in your life. So sit. You need to sit. All this running around. Sit. Sit. Tell us, sit. 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 Enjoy your chair. It's yours. Nobody's fight. Thank you. You get it. Enjoy. Do you understand this now? Set your sight on the realities of heaven where Christ sits. Now message translation from verse 1, please. You'll love this one. Message translation from verse 1. So if you are serious... About living this new resurrected life with Christ, what should you do? Let's go on. Pursue the things over which Christ resides. Let's go on now. Watch this, watch this. Don't do what? Shop. You know what that looks like? That, that's shuffling along, eyes to the ground. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things... And what I think is in front of us, pressure, depression, frustration. So this is the instruction from God. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, 
Don't be absorbed with the things right in front of you. The next two words says, look up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Which one? This one. All right. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Look up and be alert at what is going on where? That's where the last part. I love it. See things. So, how am I supposed to see 2024? How am I supposed to deal with 2024? How should I handle 2024? But how will I know his perspective if I don't go to the word? If I don't listen to proper teachings that will tell me about the word. Perspective. God's perspective. Second Corinthians. You're loving the chair? Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. Oh, glory to God. Say, everything is ready. Say, everything is ready. Say, my babies are ready. My job is ready. My life is ready. My health is ready. Everything is ready. Everything is ready. Everything is ready. Everything. How many things are ready? Everything is ready. There is no invitation without a preparation. You don't invite us to dinner when food is not ready. God will never do that. He said all things are ready. Oh, but I want a baby. Relax. Some of you have pressurized yourself. You gave prophecy that nobody gave you. And when I say nobody, I don't mean people. Sometimes, that, in fact, I don't live my life on human prophecy. I don't make major moves in my life because someone gave me prophecy. I've not lived by that for over 20 years. I, I, I'm not trying to. I appreciate prophecy. Bible says don't despise them. I don't despise them. I don't make my decisions. On prophecy. It's a very dangerous thing to do. I will not stand before God at the end of my life and he says, why did you do what you did? I say, somebody said, you said. Did you hear what I said? Somebody said, you said. So you, you cannot come and hear. I don't do that. All right? I appreciate it. I cross-check it. I won't live my life on it. If it aligns and confirms, fine. But I'll say that, no. You have to understand the plan of God for your life. All right? But all of us with unveiled face, beholding as in a glass, what? NLT. We'll do it quickly. NLT. Say everything is ready. <laughs> no, thank you. So all of us who have had the veil removed can see the, and reflect what? The glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the Spirit... Makes us more and more what? Like him as we're changed into. Let me borrow King James back. That was what I was looking for, but it's somewhere else. I can't, I'm trying to pull that back. KJV, it's fine. We'll use it. But we are with open face beholding as in a glass where? To behold means to look. Glass is a mirror. Simple. Beholding as a glass, glory of God. What happens to us? Into what? Which image? No, stay, stay within the context. Which image? The one in the mirror. It means the more I look into the mirror, the more I see what is there. The more I keep looking, the more I become what is there. When I look at the problem, I start looking like the problem. When I look into the mirror, I start looking like what's in the mirror. From glory to glory, I change. So where should you keep your eyes? In the mirror of God's word. Listen, in that mirror, you are not barren. In that mirror, you are not stupid, you are not dumb, you are not a failure, you are not anything your circumstances has turned you out to look like. In that mirror, you are the glory of God. But if you look at you, you see stupid, you see silly, you see barren, you see confused, you see broke, you see cannot keep a home, you see useless, you see not a wife material, you see all of that. In that mirror, you are everything God created you to be. Spend 2024 looking at yourself in that mirror. First John chapter number one, verse 16. Say everything is ready. Say everything is ready. Say everything is ready. When God put you on that chair, he had prepared every part of your life. Do you understand that? Let me allow you to go now. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir.
If you don't mind, keep this verse somewhere around you. This one we're looking at. Keep it somewhere. And of his fullness we are about to receive. Of his fullness we might receive. Of his fullness we will receive. So of his fullness we have what? How many of us have received? Listen, I said it earlier, I'll say it again. There's low self-esteem. If I said God told me my 2024 will be the best I've ever had, you believe me. But you don't believe yourself. Why? You have to. You have to hold God's word like God spoke it personally to you. Every person you appreciate today that is rising high, we hold what he said like he, he meant it. it. It's that simple. It's that simple. It's that simple. Again, of his fullness, how many people have received? Whether you enjoy it or not, it has been given to you. But you have to. Did you see that now? Because it says we have received because the account has written it that it entered your bank. Whether you are now enjoying it or not, it has been dispersed. Whether you are enjoying it or not, it's you. Amplified. So we just coast here. Amplified, amplified classic. Oh, thank you, Lord. Are we ready for this one? Yes, sir? All right. For out of his fullness, abundance, we have all what? All have had a share. And we're all supplied. The account has written it. Your name was signed. It entered your bank. That you enjoy health in 2024 or you don't, it's not God's fault anymore. The account was charged. They deposited it, was credited rather. You know, it was, it's, it's there. This is yours. So if you start praying, oh God, give me, oh God, do, oh God. Sit down. Look at what has been done and prepared and ready. Out of his fullness, we have all received, all have had a share. We're all supplied with what? One grace after another. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. Even favor upon favor, gift upon gift. Anybody like that here? Grace upon grace, blessing upon blessing, favor upon favor, gift upon gift. This is your 2024. Out of his fullness, we have all received. We have all had a share. We have all been supplied. One grace on top of another. One spiritual blessing on top of another. One favor, oh God, favor, no, 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 no. They have put my own favor on top of another favor. One, one gift. They didn't put gift on top of gift. They heaped a gift. Are you ready now? Your 2024. Of his fullness, I have received. I have a share. I have been supplied. One grace after another. One spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. Blessing. Upon blessing, favor, upon favor, gift, heaped, upon gift. We'll do it again, 2024. 2024, I have received of his fullness, his abundance. I have been, I have received, I have been supplied. One grace after another. Spiritual blessing, upon spiritual blessing, favor. Favor, 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 upon favor, gift. You, you got it. I was looking for how to describe the hip. Is it hip like this or hip like this? Hip, hip, hip. I, I, do you understand? Hip, of his fullness, I have received. Of his abundance, I have received, I have a share, I have been supplied, grace upon grace, blessing upon blessing, favor upon favor, gift, gift, gift. gift. 